Houston Cold has quickly gained over 60,000 Instagram followers. Very well known for his extremely unique editing style. So let's make an edit. So I'm in After Effects now. I've got a new composition with a 1080 pixel width by 1920, which is just a 9 by 16 aspect ratio. 24 frames a second and then roughly like 6 seconds for this clip. And I've dragged in the original file uh, video by Houston just so I can go frame by frame and make sure what I'm doing is like as accurate as you can. So let me trim this clip to make sure I just get the animation part. Okay, right there. Here we go. Cool. So the first thing you want to do, make a new camera. Let's go with one node camera, 50 millimeter preset. And then if you can't see any 3D, any 3D options, just click this button. Cool. Now let's put in this people are text. So right click text. Then we'll just type in people are. Let's do Proxima Nova font and then just change it to white. So that looks pretty similar. Then just hit 3D, move it behind the camera. Then we'll just kind of position it so that it's similar. Now let's make this red square. So go to new shape layer, go up to the rectangle tool, hit Q a couple times if you don't have a, a rectangle. Then just drag a rectangle slash square. You can hold shift so that's a perfect square. You don't need a stroke. We do need a fill. So we'll just pick that roundness. There's a bit of rounding um, on the square. You can see a bit there. So make it 38, that looks pretty good. Make sure your layer's 3D, move it behind your camera, then to center this anchor point so that we can kind of rotate it around the center of the square. Go to layer, transform, and center anchor point and layer content. Then just line it up with the original um, square. So rotate it on the Z axis. Maybe scale it a bit so that it's perfect. That looks pretty good. So let's animate um, a basic camera movement that kind of matches up with Houston's video. So make a keyframe at the start of the clip. And we can kind of see in the background how the video moves. So just keep on scaling it. And you can see that I have a keyframe so that it rotates because in Houston's video, it rotates obviously. So to do that, just keyframe it at the beginning. It's like roughly 20, negative 20 percent or 20 degrees. And then go to the end of the camera, move it and make it zero and keyframe it and make sure that your keyframes are easy. We don't even have a background yet. So uh, let's just do that. Go into solid, do like a bit of an off white, move it to the bottom, make it 3D and just move it back on the Z axis a bit. Not too much, <laughs> scale it up and there we go. You can see that that like red rectangle stroke thing comes in right about here. So let's make a new shape. Let's move it below the camera, below the red square. Draw it, let's turn the rounding up a bit. Okay, see how that works. So I think they used to keyframe the scale. So it looks like it gets biggest there. So keyframe it where it first comes in, right there. Then go to the last frame and scale it down. Okay, so you can see what we have. It's pretty bad right now. Uh, let's make it go behind the red square. There we go. And then just scale it up a bit, scale it up a bit more actually. There we go. And then one last reminder, highlight these keyframes, F9, then go in and ease them even more. You should always be easing your keyframes, just looks better. So for every keyframe in the rest of this video, just do it. You can kind of see the stroke poking out there and it only starts like right here. So let's just, drag it to that frame. Now we have this. People are willing. To you can see that my text is a bit small compared to Houston's. So we're gonna do a sketchy kind of way of fixing that. Just to keyframe it, go a bit forward and just scale it up a bit. It's probably not perfect to do it this way. But you can't even really tell. So now we have to put in these people walking, obviously. I just found this random guy walking on YouTube. I imported it, then we need the, this is called FX console. It's a plugin, get it. <laughs> it 
We need the fact key light, then screen color, click the green. So now we have it masked out, obviously. Then hit 3D. I'm gonna line it up with this guy here. So that's further back. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna make a couple more of them. So duplicate it, drag it over to this guy, move the position a bit forward. Cool, do it again. Move this one quite a bit. Then we're gonna take these three, duplicate them. Okay, then transform, flip horizontal, move them over. Then all we have to do, I think, is move this guy a bit. Maybe move this one a bit up. See how that looks? People are willing. Just that looks pretty good. It's kind of hard to tell, but so let me turn that off. So you can see that this one guy is obviously behind the red box. So to fix that, we will find him and kill him. No, just move him up a bit and scale him back down. It doesn't have to be perfect, obviously, the Houston's. People are willing to, to spend. So that looks pretty good. Actually move this one a bit back for a bit of more. Or actually forward, I guess, just for a bit more depth. Yeah, that's better. So here's what we have so far. People are willing to spend. Houston's got a bit of like a drop shadow. In his video, my technique's not perfect, obviously, but I've added uh, this drop shadow to one of the guys here. So on this guy, here are my settings. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it over to the rest of people. I don't even see all of them, but it doesn't matter. We're also gonna add a glow effect to this people are text. So you can use the base glow, but I have deep glow, which is what Houston uses. So yeah, you can use the built-in After Effects glow Perfect. If you have deep glow, also perfect. So that looks pretty good. Pre-comp, all those walking people and maybe change the scale a bit and reposition people if you have to, just so it's easier to work with. Go to the white background layer, um, bring up an effect called fill. We can keyframe it, just make it the off weight um, that we had before and then go a couple frames forward or just one actually and make it black. So now we have it going from white to black. So now let's pretty much do the same thing for the red graphics. So we're gonna turn them on, fill again, keyframe it, move over a frame and then keyframe that to like a blue. So now that stroke is blue. We can copy the keyframes, open it up and now Okay, when it changes to the black, this blue stroke changes into like a smaller circle or square, sorry. So we're gonna do that. So keyframe it, keyframe the scale. So hit S, so it's keyframed. And then we'll go frame later and that looks good. But we also have to position, or sorry, keyframe the position. So keyframe and then bring this back down. So now it changes color and it changes size and it changes position. Let's change the colors with all the people walking too. So we're gonna go to the pre-comp, pull up fill, Let's change the color to black for this frame. Keyframe it, which I'd already say, it's not keyframed. So we'll go in here, color, go over a frame. It's like a white, I guess, some kind of, yeah, it's white. Maybe a bit of an off weight. Let's do a bit of an off weight. There we go. Once it fades to black too, you can see that people are changed to black, obviously, and it kind of gets stretched. So let's do that. We're going to do Command D and Shift, which will split the layer. So now we have a new people are. We'll actually extend it so it's like that. Okay, so now let's turn on all the layers again. So let's change the fill to black. Let's stretch it a bit. I love you, After Effects. We'll do that, I think. In the original too, it's positions a bit higher too. So then we go we go from that to that. Also the square, the iconic square, and like gets stretched a bit. So we have to make it a bit more stretched. Is that there? So let's do that. We're gonna go into scale, keyframe it here, and have it stretched a bit and move it over a bit. So we'll keyframe. For some reason it's moved over in Houston's. So we'll do that. People are is only there for the one frame when it goes black. So we'll take that and put it for one frame. 
And then we have to put in this willing thing. So might as well duplicate it, get rid of any keyframes. So let's scale it up a bit. And then find a font. There we go. I'll change that to willing command T cool. Scale it up a bit more. Try to line it up best we can. Houston. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's make that willing quite a bit longer for now. You can tell in Houston's looks like cooler, right? Obviously. Um <laughs> that's a lot of like overlays and other effects that I'll get into in a bit. Because right now mine looks pretty plain. But the core of what you need is there. But yeah, so it'll look it'll look good at the end of the video for sure. You can see how the people walking like turn to this kind of gold color. So we can do that. Um by just going to the pre-comp, going back a frame. Yeah, going back a frame to keyframe the color of white and then go forward a frame and then do like a very subtle gold. He has a gradient on it, but it doesn't really matter. It's such a small quick shot or quick difference. And then it goes back to black. So we'll keyframe the color Oops, again, and then go forward a frame and make it black. Houston's got this kind of platform of sorts of the people walking, um, this blue shadow. So we can do that too, kind of. We're going to add a drop shadow to the blue square, change the color to blue. Gonna change the direction to 180, increase the distance a ton, change the softness a bit, and then scale the opacity down quite a bit. Something like that. There we go. Make sure you keyframe its opacity as soon as it turns to black. So just keyframe it and then open up the opacity and then go back a frame. And make sure it's down to zero so that it's not there during this whole white portion. You could go in and make a more accurate rectangle that's skewed, but honestly, it doesn't even matter. Like it, the clip is so quick that anything kind of works. I've noticed that in Houston's video, it's still zo it's still zooming in by the time you get to right about here. So all we have to do is move our camera keyframe. Now it's going to keep on zooming until here. The blue square slash rectangle starts to grow and then it turns white. So let's do that. We'll go into the blue square. So right there, let's keyframe it. Positions keyframed, scales keyframed. We just have to go to the highest point and scale it accordingly. That's probably good. But then we have to go into the keyframe of the position, go back a frame, keyframe it, and then move it up. Now let's just do a few more changes. Um, so it just turns white. <coughs> um, so we'll go into the, the blue iconic square, open up, fill, keyframe it, move over a frame, turn it to white. And then you can see how it's actually a couple frames. You can see how the blue stroke box kind of disappears. So we should do that instead of have it, having it hang out um, there. So we're just going to go here. We'll just keyframe the opacity. So go like head of frame zero, we'll move it back. So now it's, it goes away when everything moves up. I don't like the scaling of that and it's a bit slow, so we'll change it. There we go. In Houston's video, you can see that this willing text moves up a bit. So let's do that. This is the font, by the way, for this willing text, Oblique Sands. So yeah, we'll keyframe it where it kind of starts, which is like right here. So keyframe the position, then we'll go ahead a bit. It seems to stop right there. So we'll just move it up. Let's increase the scale too, just a bit. So far we have this. People are willing to spend. So it's looking pretty good. You can see that once the white hits, there's a blue small rectangle in front of the white big rectangle. So let's do that. Let's make a new shape and draw it roughly. It's change the stroke quite a bit. Let's change the color, move it behind the camera, make it 3D. So change the color to that for now. Scale it up on the Z. Let's change the color to something better now, actually, though. Also, now we can go to where it is white, trim it, scale it up. Let's move it more forward, actually, on the Z. Okay, that looks good. 
there's a white square that comes in right about here and there. So let's draw that in. We'll go new shape, hit click, click 3D, and then it's a square. So we can kind of hold shift, estimate how big it is. So that looks good. Yeah, we'll change the stroke to white. And then let's play with the position. We're gonna have to bring it way forward. Let's try three, 4,000. Nope, let's try 9,000. Where did it go? Okay, got it back. So yeah, we'll see how this looks with the camera. It's gotta come down a bit. Um, so we can just have to scale it back on the Z and then just increase the size a bit. So we'll see how that looks. No, it's still gotta be quite a bit smaller. So scale it back. Then when it comes in here, just move it up a bit on the Z, then it should be good. To spend one. Cool. Let's just increase the stroke of it because it's pretty faint. I'm gonna boost it up to eight and then let's take the deep glow or the glow from the people R text and then just paste it on so it has a bit of a nice glow. Here's what we have so far. People are willing to spend one thousand. To add in this to spend text that comes in, I've just made, I've duplicated the willing text and change the color to this red. And then similar to the white square that comes in, I just moved the position to like my negative 8,000 on the Z axis so that it's like forward and it comes in as the camera does. Houston's to spend text animates in one letter by one letter. So we can do that too. Let's go to our to spend layer, click animate, then go to opacity. Then change it down to like 100 and then go into the range selector and we'll keyframe start position when it, when it finishes, which is like right about there. So then just boost up to 100. And now we have it animating in. Here's what we have. People are willing to spend 1,000. So now we can add some of the effects that Houston is known for. And the first thing you want to add is like an adjustment layer, go to new adjustment layer, and then add posturize time and change the frame rate to 16. So that'll give it like a really cool hand-drawn kind of vintage effect. People are willing to spend. And then you can add your glow or deep glow. And here are my settings, but just give it a bit of um, glow that'll help make everything seem more cohesive. And that really just adds to the Houston style. You can see here how increasing the glow kind of makes everything blend together, but that's obviously way too much. And then add another adjustment layer with vignette. And here are my settings just to help center the subject of whatever's going on. And then the last adjustment layer, you want to have optics compensation on, and reverse the lens distortion, and then increase it to like 13 or so. Don't have it too much just because can, you can get carried away and kind of wreck it, obviously. But yeah, so have it around 13. And then use the free plugin Quick Chromatic Abrasion 3, which gives it like a cool 3D effect, kind of, you can see on the sides here, um, but don't boost it up that much. But yeah, it just helps blend everything together. And then finally, I have a mask on it. So all you have to do is go to like the shape tool, grab the circle or the oval, and then just draw an oval roughly, let's align it, and then hit Command, Shift, and I, which will invert the mask. And then let's go into the feather and just increase the feather a bit so we can have it more blended. Now, oh, I didn't even invert it. Okay, there we go. People are willing to spend. Make sure all of your layers have this motion blur on, and then make sure that this is turned on as well. If you don't have enough motion blur, um, you can go into your composition settings, go to advanced and then increase the shutter angle. We can do something like 200. That should be pretty good. A lot of Houston's videos will also have like an overlay on top of it. Um, so this is just the film scratch and you can change the, the blending mode to something like lighten and then just change the opacity down a bit. And that'll just help kind of make it more interesting and add another layer of depth. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, got some value in it. Took a long ass time to make. Um, so yeah, you can like, dislike, subscribe, unsubscribe, whatever. Peace.